Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel. And in today's Tech Question Quickie video, we've got an uh, interesting question about getting into repairing components like I have actually, uh, unfortunately, been doing a lot of lately. All right, if you don't know what our Tech Question Quickie is, it's where you send your questions to techquestions at l1training.com, and if I can, I'll answer to the best of my ability here. So today's question comes from Nate M, and Nate says, Hey, I'm interested in expanding my electronic services to include module repair, including PCM, ECM, advanced cluster repair, mileage transfer and security transfer to replacement new or used units, and whatever else may come my way. Do you have any modules or classes specifically based on this only? Uh, in all honesty, I don't know how to introduce and emulate signals into clusters and other modules to properly test them as I do not have a garage or direct automotive knowledge, but I know my way around a soldering iron quite well. Thanks for your time. Nate, this is kind of a complicated thing, um, so I, I don't have anything directly related to it. On our website at l1training.com, we do have uh, a few EEPROM kind of situations, but I would... Um, caution you to say that I, I would not recommend you take on any kind of automotive module repair jobs unless there's simple component replacement that you have yourself diagnosed. 99.9% .9 of my calls, even of my local customers, that are pretty much the only people I will do module repairs for, a few YouTube friends and then my local customers, um, I have to be the one that diagnoses the concern with the vehicle and determine what component inside the module has failed before I'll even attempt the repair. Uh, I do get tons of people to call and go, hey, can you rebuild this module? Um, and if they want me to stop and replace every single component on the board, I'll do that for five, six thousand dollars to spend the time to do all that. Uh, obviously, not an option. Now, things like changing mileage, again, uh, you can do on some, you can't do on others. Takes a plethora of EEPROM tools of different types and makes. Um, transferring security data to new and used units. Some units will have to be programmed first and then maybe coded or married. And then sometimes you have to have the vehicle there because some manufacturers, some vehicles for some years require a handshake procedure to be performed. Hold up, is this getting kind of confusing? Well, if it is, you guys can head over to l1training.com and I have hundreds of hours of advanced level training. We cover diagnosis, module programming, EEPROM, immobilizer, keys, board repairs, all of the great stuff you guys have questions about at l1training.com. Most of these classes are done live, so we have these Q&As where we can ask, you guys can ask questions and I answer them right there. Head on over to l1training.com and sign up and we'll see you guys there. Uh, if you catch my drift, all of these things equate to, if you're not heavily involved in the automotive industry, uh, it can become very, very difficult to waste a lot of your time and a customer's time on a module because it's not as simple as just moving data. Uh, you could get into the business of maybe cloning modules from one to the other, and then you could circumvent those kinds of situations. But again, you would really need to understand your limitations and how each one's designed. There are so many different variations. Some clusters are just a cluster that take inputs and show you gauges. Some of them communicate on multiple networks at a time. Some of them communicate on multiple networks, perform security functions, store key information. Some of them don't. Some of them are plug and play because they have software, but a used one will work plug and play. A new one has to be programmed first. Thousands and thousands of variations. It would probably take as much time uh, to learn to do just that being outside the automotive industry as it would to just get into the industry and, and, and learn it by being a technician. So unfortunately, Nate, I don't have a good answer for you. If all of that is something you're willing to do, more power to you. I don't ever want to tell anyone not to do something, uh, but I do see a lot of possibilities for, for some hard times because there's no formal training, no good source of information for all of this. It's mostly learned by trial and error. And if you guys have questions, you can send them to techquestions at l1training.com. And thanks, Nate, for your question.